Thanks. So um, this is the accelerator buff, and the idea here is really to get the discussion started, right? So what I'm trying to do is get you to discuss the things. And um, what I think would be helpful if we uh, first to see, to find the topics that we actually want to discuss, because the problem is obviously larger than the 45 minute slot that we have here that we perhaps, everybody who has a specific interest in what they would like to discuss could perhaps raise their hand, introduce themselves quickly, and then uh, we see what, what, in, what, we have, what we are interested in and what we need to discuss. And if Kirill is in the room, no, he wanted to show something, please. Um, I'm from Mentor Graphics, Thomas Schwinger. And um, we are likely to be doing a project to implement OpenACC2 okay. in GCC. And yeah, that's why I'm here at the moment. We are currently uh, trying to figure out how to design the system. Of course, there's a lot of similarity with OpenMP, of course. And we should share a lot of code, of course. Thanks. Sounds interesting. So, Kirill, do you want to quickly say who you are and what you're going to show us here? Yeah. Hello, my name is Kirill Zyuchin. I'm working for Intel, and I would like to contribute to GCC while uh, with uh, GNC uh, or Intel 5 uploading features uh, by using OpenMP4. So, I want uh, just uh, a two minute. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, spend two minutes of your time showing what uh, Intel 5 is and which interfaces uh, is available. That's it. There's uh, only a few, uh, few slides. Okay, thanks. Um, anybody else? Is anybody from NVIDIA or AMD present in the room? I'm not from NVIDIA or AMD, but I'm on the C++ standards committee and I have been working with folks from NVIDIA and Thanks. Anybody else that wants to introduce himself? Oh, please. I, I'm Go ahead. AMD. I'm certainly interested in just the general area. Can you uh, can you speak about AMD's position regarding GNU tools and support in GNU tools or anything else that might be interesting for us? Um, certainly some of the front end dialect types of things is an area I think that is useful to get out and, and discuss and how that's approached. Um, I think certainly at some point just the general how do you approach the architecture in terms of at what points, you know, because there's, there's a variety of different ways to do that. Uh, I think notions, that there's some areas when you start to get to generating not only host code but also device related code and how do you approach that problem and, and what the implications are uh, from a GCC architecture. So, I agree with you that there's a set of larger sorts of areas and just, if nothing else, understanding what some thoughts are of how to, how to start that process and how to, what to build on and how to approach that. Okay, thanks. Right. So, I suggest, and you know, if you have other suggestions or have other thoughts about how we should run this, then please speak up. So, I suggest, uh, I have a list of additional topics that I could quickly mention. So that we have an idea, then perhaps um, Thomas and uh, Kirill can um, say something more about uh, either their project or the mic thing. And then we hopefully can find our discussion topics and use the remaining time to discuss. Does this sound about right? Sure. Great. So um, the list of topics that I have is essentially um, yeah, four of them. First of all, so the front-end issues. So, um, so which programming abstractions? So Chandler talked a bit about SG-1. We have the CPLEX group, so the, the C committees, uh, C parallel language extensions study group. Um, there are others, of course, OpenMP is there, OpenACC is a similar. Uh, so which of those do we try to target, right? Can we find one set that the project could focus on? So one set of abstractions or one abstraction? Um, 
The second part is the everything that we have in the middle end, uh, obviously. So the goal here is that we might end up more likely or less likely. It's you know, I let you decide it with more than one programming abstraction, right? And so even though we have several ways for programmers to extract how they would like to run stuff on Accelerator, in the middle end and in the compiler, I guess all of us agree we'd like to have not several intermediate representations or several representations of all that, right? So how do we converge to one? What should it contain? How do we deal with that? Um, one part of that is obviously that we need to target two different ISAs and we might have different address spaces. So how do we represent that, right? Um, <clears throat> and for example, also other things. Do we need to and want to represent communication between, hosts, between the host and accelerator in the compiler or do we leave this to the libraries? Um, the third part is then obviously the backend. So in which virtual ISAs do we target, right? Which runtime libraries do we want to bind to and, you know, create a dependency to. And an interesting thought there, or I think perspective there, is we look at this from the free software side, then which ISA we choose and at which level it sits obviously also depends on how much is below the ISA until we actually get to the hardware, right? For GCC, that might not be too important, but if you look at the wall free software stack, then it has an implication and you might or might not want to consider that. Um, and finally, the last two points um, that I have here are, or the last three are actually testing. Is there anything they need to discuss or, you know, figure out uh, what happens on the other GNU tools? So GDB, for example, and all the debugging thing. And also for uh, later buffs, are there any points that we can take out of this buff and have as input to the re-architecture buffs that we have uh, during the rest of the call run? So these are my points. Um, if you have any other opt topics to add, then speak up now. Otherwise, then some of you please start and you know quickly talk about what you, or say what you wanted to say. <laughs> so um, there, there are some other already available accelerator implementation. Maybe you can try to open up for um, communication with other community besides. The for the MP community and the OpenCC, there are already some commercial and maybe open source implementation that maybe people can try to learn something from each other. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Do you have particular examples in mind? or? Um, actually, I, I work uh, with a lot of skill more national app. So in our group, we have a container called the uh, Rose container. Recently, we released some open P accelerator implementation targeting and GPU. So it's already released on the web. We published the paper recently. So maybe for something we can discuss the how to learn from each other. Okay. Yeah. Any anyone else with any other topic? Then who of you two wants to start? <laughs> okay. First one that moved. <laughs> oh, that would be you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pointed at the other guy. <laughs> Can I hand over the mic without disturbing the bureaucracy process too much? Oh. Okay, thanks. Oops. Okay, so, uh, yes, um, something wrong. It's no matter. <laughs> okay, let me uh, say a few words about uh, Intel Mic. It's also called uh, uh, Intel Xeon Phi. This is kind of additional card which is inserted in, inside the PCI. Um, oops, excuse me, where is everything, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sorry, here we go, this is correct, <laughs> so, uh, 
So, so, uh, <laughs> this was legal issues. <laughs> uh, here is a quick overview of uh, what uh, current public mic is. Uh, it is more than 50 cores, uh, which is capable, of, uh, each of which is capable of running up to four, uh, up to four threads. Uh, we have uh, about one kilohertz uh, frequency. Uh, we all, uh, this card is also feature uh, 512 uh, bitwise uh, wide uh, vector instructions and about up to 16 uh, gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Uh, uh, this card and CPU does not actually share uh, does not actually share uh, physical memory and working as I said through PCI Express connection. Uh, here is quick overview how it is looks like from architectural point. Uh, so we have uh, Linux kernel both on Linux, uh, maybe it can be Windows, I don't know. Um, so we have. Uh, Linux on the hosts uh, running uh, and um, Linux on the Xeon, uh, Xeon Intel Xeon Phi. Linux it's a slightly modified version, uh, but the upcoming version of Mike is going to support uh, almost vanilla Linux. Uh, we have a set of drivers uh, both on host and on the target uh, and uh, uh, interface libraries. Uh, we also able to uh, SSH to the card in order to perform a direct execution without any offloading. <sighs> so, moving on. So here is, I think that we may uh, name this slide. Uh, yeah, sure. So on, on the bottom there when it says Linux OS, yeah. those tied to be the same? No, nope. uh, this is completely different uh, Linuxes. Uh, so you have Yes, yes. Um, okay. So uh, I think that we may uh, name this slide as a uh, vision of OpenMP4 of loading, <laughs> actually. So what uh, the programmer uh, actually should designate is uh, the sections of code uh, uh, which uh, he wants to be offloaded, a uh, uh, data which uh, he wants to be offloaded in or get out or privatize it on the card. Uh, and actually, this is not mentioned here, uh, uh, some synchronization stuff uh, in order uh, if programmer would like to some asynchronous execution. Um, so um, the main point, I think the main point of uh, things like OpenMP4 and is that uh, no further programming or API knowledge is ne are needed. Uh, by the programmer and GCC should uh, take care of all of that by using some, I don't know, code generation, runtimes, etc., etc. So um, that's it. Uh, here is a quick example of uh, what uh, in my mind we should uh, generate. So we have a source code uh, which calls some foo. Uh, we have a region uh, mentioned for offloading. Uh, we have uh, uh, a routine which also uh, mentioned uh, as a floating uh, and this uh, should be transformed uh, in something like this. So uh, in the main we have something to be uh, something some stuff to initialize the cards the card or cards uh, and deinitialize it. Um, we also need to have uh, a versioned, uh, versioned code uh, inside Foo. So uh, in case if uh, we have mics on the system, it is enabled. Uh, we should uh, try to execute it offload. offload. Uh, uh, we should execute it on the card. Uh, and if not, we just uh, using a, a host implementation, a host uh, generated uh, version of Foo. Uh, so we we'll also have uh, on the ho in the host program, the host version of uh, full part and bar. Uh, on the mic, um, uh, in my mind, we should have uh, a separate program uh, which is listening for connections, waiting for connections, uh, and is able to on demand uh, in execute the uh, programs, version programs which are offloaded to it. So we have a main with initialization, uh, uh, a full. Uh, a full part, uh, which is version for mic and bar version for mic. 
This is what I what I think it should be do <laughs> should should be done. Um, uh, actually, a few words about uh, software stack, uh, which is currently available. Intel uh, provides a so-called MPSS, many core platform software stack, which uh, for programmer uh, it consists of two main parts. Uh, the most interesting for us is COI, uh, coprocessor of load interface, which simplifying of loading, uh, synchronization, uh, and data input and output. Uh, and uh, this uh, interface COI is actually uses uh, something more low level uh, library, which is called SCIV, Symmetric uh, Communication Interface. Uh, this acts like an uh, RPC stuff. So uh, COI is just an abstraction of SCIV. I'll also uh, put here a link where, with where uh, many tutorials available. And here is a quick picture uh, of what this is, uh, this is look like. So we have an application, COI, uh, this is kind of symmetric, but uh, actually we have uh, different, uh, uh, different implementations for host and for mic. Uh, this is just uh, uh, identical names. Uh, so this is the stack. So COI, SCIF, uh, driver, this is uh, which uh, lives in, uh, in kernel space and PCI Express hardware. That's it. Okay. Sure. Can you go back to two slides from this one, two back from this. So this code. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to have systems with 100 cores, mm -hmm. um, then that means. Uh, so let, let me give you some background. So we've got thousands of loops in our code. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I'm going to have a system with 100 cores, then that means that um, I better not have more than 1% serial sections in my entire code. Mm -hmm. And if I have hundreds of loops, and if I have to put that pragma on hundreds of loops, mm -hmm. um, chances of me having 1% serial sections is low. So I guess what I'm saying is you guys can enable acceleration, but how am I going to get the performance out of it? Uh, is the yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's it's not quite a different story because I think what you're getting at is that you need to build the programming abstractions in such a way that you can, for example, keep the data on the accelerator and don't have to shuffle in around because once you go back to the to the host, for example, this is the right. what is gets bigger than the, the one. Percent. I believe this is possible in open. Has, has that capability. Yes. So you can push the data into the accelerator and then. Short, short sections. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, my English, but yes, uh, we are able to have a, a private memory on the card. So we uh, just once offload and keep it there. The, the foo part neck mm -hmm. right there, my understanding of it, having <coughs> with some code, is the foo part mic bit to get perform uh, acceptable performance out of accelerators is the ratio of the size of the part that would be foo part mech has got to be radically larger than the enclosing loop which uh, where you yes. have yeah. the that's on the wall. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's my understanding of um, that. So this is just it fits on one slide. Yeah, but this uh, this is just an example you might right. yeah. <laughs> that fits on the slide. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Let me just make a few observations and maybe some things tied back to GCC. Um, one of the areas I'd like to get a little bit of feedback maybe from other folks is there's some areas of commonality and there's probably some areas of difference of how you approach Xeon Phi versus other accelerators. So one example that I see at least of commonality is the fact that you're starting from a source and you basically generate both a FUPART host and a FUPART mech. Yeah and thoughts of, of where and how to approach that. GCC is really good at being retargetable to lots of backends, but there's sort of one target at a time. Right. And yeah. how to approach that problem is certainly an area I'd be wanting to hear from people about how to approach that. We have to ask one to discuss and those sorts of things. Yes. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's take down this topic. Okay. Another example 
of, of something is the fact that Mick may or may not be present. So you've got some notion of, of dispatch going on to say, well, on the systems that have it, I'm, I need to make a runtime call on systems that don't, you know, and where or how you approach you know, that aspect. To make matters a little more complicated, um, you have the host, you may have two different kinds of accelerators in the machine. Yep. Right? Yep. You, you yep. can have yep. several yep. MIC cards in the, right. in the machine. And, yeah. and, and, then, and then the third area, I'll just make an observation. I think there will be some differences in how you approach exactly tagging, whether it's OpenMP4 or whether it's OpenAC or other sorts of things. But there's, there's notions to what extent do you make that explicit? To what extent do you approach it like auto par? Or, or some other approach like that, and then how does that affect it? So I, I don't want to derail that conversation here, but I at least want to make a few observations of, of a few areas that I think are in common and I think also start to really affect how you approach that problem from GCC of, of how, do you, how do you get to both the host and the MIC? How do you do the dispatch? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I guess I suggest we keep the middle end topic, so this is exactly yep. having both. Uh, for after Thomas, and you yep. wanted to make a quick comment? Uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I mean, some of it is you're going to hopefully want to compile once for a heterogeneous computing environment. What if you've got, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I don't need to really say much more than that. What if you'd like to run this on something with a pile of, you know, CUDA or a pile of these or a pile of... This is the issue, yes. Or a pile of <laughs> insert anything else here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is of course the backend and which yeah, ISIS we actually target. Okay, yeah. so we have already two well, candidates just, that the abstraction doesn't that. really cover because it's the abstraction is poor for that. Right. Yeah. Yes. So if we might have more distributed kinds of memories, non cache current memories, and all that kind of stuff, right. it gets but more interesting. Right. Actually, so we can have uh, versions for uh, Acuda and for ATI here. Nothing prevents it. Uh, yeah, but I agree that at the programming abstraction level, we need to be perhaps a bit more, you know. Oh, we need to be this more is talks about more. OpenMP. <laughs> right. So, perhaps Thomas, could you now discuss your project or give well, us some more as much possible as as much information as possible? As I said, the project is pretty new okay. still for okay. us, and the plan, of course, is then to eventually contribute that upstream, and we are. Uh, still pretty early in the design phase how to approach the problem. Of course, uh, most of the slides I, I could reuse and exchange your um, uh, co-processor with the GPU and exchange and <coughs> ACC. And, uh, the, the crucial difference for um, open ACC compared to open MP is of course that you're not a shared uh, memory system but have to uh, manage the device memory manually. Or ideally, of course, the compiler does uh, useful things there. Well, for OpenMP, it's not shared memory either. And uh, the targeting. You device have device memory, memory, and you have. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually yeah, pretty similar. And it's, it's a bit of different syntax, but uh, yeah. architecture. And of course, OpenACC, as I read it, is a spin off of OpenMP, so that's where it's coming from. Yeah, hopefully one would hope that they converge eventually. Yeah, that's, that's the plan, as far as I understand it, that it's okay. sort of testing bed and eventually will be merged back into OpenMP. Yeah, I, I think all, all the relevant topics have already been raised. So, so which is so in the project that you're running, so you start with OpenACC and, and what do you eventually target? Um, it's PTX. Okay. So And yeah, I mean, no. And so, so are you going to implement PTX as a separate backend? That's like the plan. Yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, a lot of code will. Uh, the, the 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 target architecture is x86, unsurprisingly, <laughs> and we plan to have a separate backend for PTX and have to hook that together somehow. One plan we have is to explore whether we can reuse some of the LTO uh, infrastructure that already exists to sort of capture the regions of code that uh, should be running on the accelerator. 
and uh, sorry, LTO to grab yeah. pieces of code, to run. Yeah, to, to, to the, the mecha mechanism to stream them out. Oh, because you want bytecode. Sort of. Okay, okay. and PTI okay. just basically. The bytecode and then you just have a plugin which reads it yeah. again and okay. compiles. So that, that's, that's the plan you, you do a regular compile and preserve the sections of code you will need for the accelerator. And after your regular uh, target compile, you do another compile to the uh, back end for, for the accelerator and then hook it, that all together. Do you think you can keep it target independent until LTO? Or are you past LTO to some extent? It's a whole other conversation though. Can't we yeah. evaluate the cost functions of uh, main host versus accelerator unless you know something about host targets? Well, there are, there are things like branch codes, but we want to get rid of that uh, for early code. And then there are things like uh, Yes, sizes of types and so on, and yeah. layout of structures. But I guess we basically need to use the same layout as the host for, yeah, for the, that's for the, the target. Because our interpretation of OpenACC is that it mandates that the uh, ABI basically between the, the target and the device is the same. Yeah, because you copy the data and you, you can't have a function mm -hmm. okay. You really copy and do these, not these are the uh, fields and I need to translate them and this is this is little Indian and this is weak Indian yeah, and yeah. I need to swap it and whatever. At least for the data that's going in and out, right? For everything else, in theory you could do whatever you want, right? Okay, so we have about twenty minutes. Uh, unless you want to run over into the break, we can do that. <laughs> so, right, I was, I was going to comment, you, you officially have until you know, 20 more minutes, but if you want to run right up to 4.45, it's fine. This is, after this, it's break. So, what's your thoughts? How much time do we want to spend? Over here. <laughs> Let's dive in from the middle. Okay, so... Two questions that we, uh, or two topics came up. So the first one was the programming abstractions. I'm not sure we need to discuss this right now. Most of the people seem to be interested in the back end and having the two versions, right? And there's a committee yeah. that you're on that helps. Well, for the, for the front end, uh, yeah, we, we are already working on OpenMP and you are probably going to work or already working on OpenACC. You just then need to agree on the middle end stuff and I agree. So we have solved one of the topics. That's good. <laughs> well, the current well, that's, that's one standard for <laughs> OpenMP is that we are basically done with the parsing of the accelerator stuff and, and, also and the simplification, and then, then we stop. Yeah, so we need to design the uh, function APIs, what to call if you want to offload, and, and then, of course, clone the functions and LTO them. And Okay, and so we have the uh, middle end discussion that we could probably flesh out. The other op thing is that you mentioned that you're going to target PDX, PTX, right? Um, are we comf so PTX means that below we have a lot of driver blob, so right, and you know this is perhaps not useful if you look at it from a free software perspective, given that we are the GNU tools cauldron, right? So what Another topic we might discuss is, you know, which kind of uh, intermediate representation or virtualizer we could pick, right? Whether we could pick one, whether it would be PTX eventually, or something different, perhaps whether there's something where, you know, we can share a lot, and then it's just a little code that goes to PTX and to whatever else, and things like that. So that would be another topic. And so who would like to discuss the back end first, and who would like to discuss the middle end first? Quick show of hands. Middle end? Okay, in the back end? Oh, come on. Back end, oh, it's, it's equal. <laughs> so again, so middle end, everyone decide no. Okay, back end? You voted twice, Jeff. 
Okay, so we have, let's say we do 15 minutes for the midland, 15 minutes for the back end, and then we're half past, and then we ha can do a quick wrap up and have some, still some more break. Sounds good? Sure. Great. So, middle end. Um, yeah, so we mentioned having two versions and what to do about it. Um, other things that I have in my notes here are um, whether we need to do something for the internal abstractions, right? Whether it's sufficient to just say this is the code or whether we need to do more in terms of perhaps say this is, this is accelerator code and it has a parallel loop in it. What does everyone think about this? So. In OpenMP, you have separate pragmas for, for the parallel stuff and, and so on. So, uh, and yeah, you have different trees for that or gimbal couples. So, do we want to represent it all in the in OpenMP abstractions for now? Does it sound right for everybody, or any other suggestions? What if what? I think it should be more inclusive. OpenMP have uh, to. Okay, which which I guess everyone agrees, but you know, yeah. what does it mean? And well, we can use uh, OpenMP uh, yeah, codes for that as well. For instance, the current uh, auto parallelization just generates OpenMP code. But it all depends on, uh, are all the different, the different alternatives that you're looking at compatible semantically with uh, OpenMP fragments? If they are, maybe you Well, OpenACC is, is somewhat different. It has different clauses. Uh, but basically, they do the same thing, but they are I would kind of different things. I, 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 would, I would, personally, I would wait for a language to standardize something. And, just implement what the language standard says. So, <laughs> so, so OpenMP is not a language standard? <laughs> so what's um, one, one what's the definition of a standard is right. it's effectively there. Yeah. Right. So, so if we think OpenMP is going to kind of win the standards war. Um, I don't know about that. We don't know. <laughs> right. But, or, or but something <laughs> similar to it. The problem is when uh, something that has totally different semantics wins. And, and you're caught, in, caught with the old semantics. But if, if, but if you implement today OpenMP-like semantics, and then you know, two, five years from now, the C++ standard comes with something that's 80% similar, then you're fine. That, that's true, most John. That's true. So, uh, Chandler? So the big Speaking thing is, much. like, um, the front ends have largely um, helped push the standard to similarity. You've got sort of the OpenCL um, approach, which is kind of runtime compile accelerator code. Then you've got the CUDA uh, approach, which <coughs> is more of call libraries and, uh, well, um, you explicitly define blocks of code and in you know, separate source files, and then make calls to those. Um, then you've got OpenMP, which the compiler actually helps out with and does it. And I will honestly say, I don't know OpenACC except for I, I know that it was um, essentially NVIDIA going, we can't wait for the OpenMP people to work out their differences. Uh, we'll take a, a proposed standard that works for us and um, run with it. It's almost like OpenMP. Right, and so so I would say that if we're talking about doing it in the compiler, um, I would say that as long as there's enough um, semantic richness to ex do the to handle the expressiveness that both Intel and AMD or A Intel AMD and um, um, Nvidia have, then. Um, we should be able to do it. And they're all um, cooperating to some extent or another on the OpenMP 4.0 accelerator spec. So we hope they're looking out for their own best interests. Yeah. Chandler? They certainly are cooperating on the OpenMP 4.0 accelerator spec. Um, and they're 
are all participating. Um, and, and from what we've looked at, the, the middle end aspects of, of OpenFP Accelerator, uh, OpenACC, uh, that there's a great amount of commonality. Uh, so I, I, I think what we're doing with OpenFP is rich enough to express what needs to be done for OpenACC. I believe it is a super set of OPE properties. Um, I, I uh, wait a second, Chandler wanted to say something. I, I wanted to point out that comment about that Diego was making about what this is going to end up standardizing. I, I can't predict the future, um, but I, I would not expect C standard to standardize OpenMP in any form. Oh, wow. I agree. I don't think it's going to use different syntax. It's going to use, it's going to be at least radically different syntax, and and if I, if I were a betting person, I would not wager on it having the same semantics. Uh, yeah, because uh, my comment was because uh, when I speak with uh, when I talk to language people, and they, you mentioned OpenMP, that they, they, they their skin crawls visibly because they just don't like the the, the way the program. Approaches the. I mean, you know, just so imagine you have a hundred million lines of code uh, as that's an example. Right. So that's you know that's going to be the struggle. Yeah. I mean, who wants to put pragmas through a hundred million lines of code and then keep them up to date? That's you're going to lose. Yeah. Right. I'm not doing something different from that, though. Right. I'm trying to say that that during the language standardization process, the C++ committee, I am completely convinced that the semantic model, the programming model, and the syntax will all change. Yeah, and that may be, like, but we're looking at 14 or 17 before we really see where that's going to go. It's going to be a lot of time. That's just going to be too it, long. I agree. Five, five, it five, definitely five. won't be in 14. It, it, well, we know that. It, 14's already done. Okay. Okay. So then we're thinking 17 earliest. Uh, and, and, and not even I mean, that. So the, it, the, the simple standard is moving completely away from this kind of annualized thing. Right? There's no schedule. It's going to be when it's ready that it goes into the standard. We don't know when it's ready. Um, um, OpenMP isn't even being seriously, like the, the first time it was even kind of theoretically discussed for standardization was at the last meeting. It was not seriously discussed. Um, I think that a serious discussion about standardizing accelerator programming model for C++ is a very long way away. And, it, and, and we can't really predict what it's going to look like by looking at what we have today. I agree. So this was also my uh, impression that I got at the uh, C++ committee meeting, so that they tried, OpenMP wasn't very well received. And on the, in CPLEX, they are, the initial proposal that they have is mostly silk, and with the, their goal is to get, you know, or their the task is to get as much, or they, they, they have been given the task to get as much OpenMP inside of it as is necessary and makes sense, so. Um, but the, the, pro the point here, as what Chandler said, is important to note is that neither CPLEX nor C++ SG1, so the Parallelism and Concurrency Study Group, have been really wanting to target accelerators now. So we can't expect on them, you know, to give us something in the near future. So what drove you to ask this question now at this meeting? Why did you decide to bring this off up at this meeting? Because I wanted to get the discussion starting. And uh, I wasn't expecting for us to say, okay, we this, this, and this is that, and you know, in GCC 5.0 we have it, or something. So, um, I guess we're halfway there, right? We're starting to discuss, and it's a start. <laughs> Does it answer your question? Another thing that's clear to me, we can't wait for the language. No. The language yeah. will do what the language does, and then when we, when we reach that bridge, you cross it. But exactly. Just now we question. should just concentrate on, on, on merging the two or three uh, accelerator approaches. Although, we, as you pointed out, we need to follow the language discussions to get a sense of the set of semantics that we might have to not diverge from them, you know, too, too heavily. If nothing else, there are a non-trivial number of standards committee members in this room. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are a non-trivial number of them and they can push that discussion too. Yeah. Is that to the okay. expected? Uh, way it will happen that the standards committee eventually comes up with a language, or will it be more like uh, some uh, compiler implementer makes something that works? Just let's adopt it. I guess it will be yeah. both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it seems to me that there's fine grained parallelism 
there's coarse grain parallelism, which is what you were talking about. There's some basic semantics, and much of what the language committee is going to discuss is how to map those semantics into the language structure. So nobody likes OpenMP, nobody likes putting in fragments, nobody likes all this stuff. But if you have the if you have the, the, the functional structure, somebody's going to be able to figure out a way to express it in a way which is which doesn't require you to modify a hundred million lines of code. Chandler? So one of the things that the language committee is going to think about that I think would be useful to think about in this context is that there may be the need for new abstractions in the program in order to map the program onto these different parallel execution models. And it's very important and very easy to get wrong the, the nature of those abstractions to ensure that the compiler, and especially the optimizing compiler, can decompose the abstractions and return your code to the kind of high performance form that it might have originally been written in for serial execution. Right? Had the abstractions added to map on parallel execution. But then if your optimizer is, is hampered by those abstractions, right, suddenly your parallel execution runs on many cores, but it runs 10 times slower. It's really, really important that we, we actually have an abstraction boundary both at the language level and in the optimizer level that actually allows the optimizer to move through that. So one I know MP doesn't do that from what I can Yeah, well, OpenMP is, is in very notable. One of the things that is shooting OpenMP down in the committee is the fact that OpenMP forces the abstraction boundary to be that of a function called dispatch in some cases. And that makes it harder to optimize. Now, there, there, there are strategies around that, but you've got to be thinking about how you get around that abstraction boundary. So one thing, I, I mean, programmers by and large, not necessarily the people here in the, the room, are, are still wrapping their brains around the, the changes to the memory model or um, in C++ 11 and C. Um, and, um, and that was that was a very subtle shift um, in the way that pe uh, programmers look at um, memory. Now, um, whenever we're dealing with accelerators, realize this is kind of the very first time that programmers are really starting to deal with um, non-addressable memory um, in uh, or not directly addressable memory and functions like that, that's, that's going to take quite a while to evolve um, before we really can do the very tight things that you're talking about because it's, a, it's, it's different than what anybody has studied ever. Then we're stuck in the wrong language because we have first class pointers. If you just erase the list, Right, and it's certainly arrays or views into arrays is certainly things that people have been looking into, even in the C and C++ realm especially. Um, Chandler? This actually leads me to an interesting question that I have. Uh, for most of the people who are familiar with the hardware in the accelerator space, is, is there an important need for different address spaces, like fundamentally different address spaces. I assume the answer is yes, because people are talking about yeah. it. And, and if the answer is yes, what is that mean? Like, can you explain why it, it's not OK to have the, the language and you know, represent this with a unified address space and, and to kind of fix it in the runtime? So the the short, short answer to this, happen? well, the very short answer to this one is there is a um, there are two constraints. You have power constraints on moving data from one physical location to another, and um, and that those power constraints um, limit you. Number one. Number two, um, the the amount of parallelism um, and the demands it puts on whatever you have as an interconnect between main memory and um, the the processing unit. Um, the, 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 the factor of n for parallelism has shot up so greatly with the 256, 512, or whatever next week we're going to have um, in terms of the number of cores, it makes it impossible to design um, a physical interconnect that 
can pr uh, access memory in the same way as whenever we were uh, designing programming models around uh, linear execution frameworks. But we need to distinguish there between whether we have one address space, right? Right. Where we just have where pointers make sense uh, no matter where they come, even you cannot access some parts of the address space. Mm -hmm. Whether you have something, you know, with, with the, on the page granularity where you swap in and copy stuff, or whether it's actually cache coherent without any OS intervention, right? I, I don't think cache coherent can even happen on, like, for example, if you take the cell, there's no way you can do cache coherent. But yeah, right. so the address coherent. space is uniform uh, to a certain extent. Not necessarily meaningful this when uh, you actually have closely covered memory for each card and they can communicate with each other, but it's so slow that you really shouldn't do that. Yeah, you shouldn't use it. It doesn't mean that you have an address space and things out laid uh, laid out in one address space, right? So and I think we just I agree that, that you don't want to have cache coherence across the room, right? So, physically, I mean, you know? <laughs> but the, it's just a multiplication problem. If you have 50 cores and you need to keep them all uh, agreeing about what the memory looks like, is spending all this time agreeing and what the memory looks like and, and not doing any work. Yeah. And energy. And also, yeah. and, and that's a big portion of it now because you start getting thermal. OK, so maybe we want to go back to the middle end. Uh, <laughs> I didn't understand your question. Sorry, can you speak up? In other words, I, I don't know, I'm sure the internal compiler is properly structured to do the dependency analysis that would be necessary to do this. I mean, right now you're just doing whatever it tells you, right? With the current uh, OpenMP or OpenACC, it tells you to do something that you do, and there's no dependency analysis involved, right? So Except if you want to do SIMD things automatically, for example. Well, that's that's normal vectorization. Yeah, but it's the dependence analysis. Don't have to move yeah. the data back and forth across the And the CD in OpenMD yeah. is exactly the We should talk. Okay. Uh, I know it for you. Uh, the compiler doesn't have to prove it. Right. Uh, if you not say it's automatic, right? So actually, for OpenACC, and it just reports the uh, implicit uh, part of them. So you can just put the ACC kernel, the, the compiler to sort of figure out how you actually parallelize the portion of code. So in that sense, it's a little bit different from OpenMT, which is uh, explicit, uh, exactly how to parallelize things, uh, work with the data. So OpenACC is, is more data oriented? Uh, OpenACC open <coughs> supports both uh, implicit and explicit uh, parallelism. So it's kind of, in that sense, kind of a superset on what will OpenMT, okay. OpenMT explicit. But to a certain extent, we can uh, <laughs> Uh, do optimistic transformation we would just assume that something doesn't alias and then at runtime we check that it doesn't otherwise we use some other code. I suppose we could refine this to have a better sort of hit rate that uh, makes the compiler optimize the right path if we use feedback directed so, so, so that may be a key point is in whatever the accelerator fragment is currently assumes there's no aliasing once you get inside that boundary, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. right. uh, no matter which one it is. But so the auto-parallelization uh, generally doesn't have this information, so it just makes assumptions. Um, right. But that's how the that's 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 structure Well, but there, there's a lot of copying going on between uh, the, the post, the, you know, the, the, the original thread when you, when you do an open and pragma, um, unless you're sharing things explicitly, Things are copied in, and but I, but I guess what I'm saying is, if, you, if, if all the accelerator models currently assume that there's no way of seeing the, uh, within the bounds of whatever it is they launch, then you do have dependency for an, uh, for uh, code uh, for data motion analysis that you, you can't apply to just a code that conforms to the normal language standard. I don't know what I'm I guess I'm saying that, that all these move in and out things, you now have an opportunity to optimize it away. Mm -hmm. You're in these uh, fragments, which you didn't have 
if you have to deal with the real language here. Okay. I, I believe there will be a day that uh, with what you now see as uh, directives to move data come in. So I mean, that's all I can say. Okay. Actually, even today for OMG, it tries to support uh, no, no data motion between CPUs or GPUs. Because it designs the, like, like the map cloud as map instead of copy tool. Because by um, by using map, it means you can actually, you don't have to copy things around. You can just map, like memory space map. So in that sense, it's fine to handle those like that. Share the memory across uh, different uh, CPU. CPU that also, maybe you can actually still predict, actually move things around. So it uses the map instead of copy, uh, which is used in OpenACC. That's kind of explicitly moving data around. But how do you map, I, I was, how do you map memory across the internet? And that, that depends on the hardware implementation. But the, the standard committee, they you decided to use the map instead of a copy tool just to support a future architecture. If they could support this kind of shared memory across a like heterogeneous processor. I think the point is trying. flexibility in the language standard point of view. I think the point is trying to make is that if you say you map, then it means that it could still be the same object, yes. right? If ever, whereas when you say you copy to, you know that there, there must be a copy, and so if you access the thing on the accelerator and the, and the host is, or if you access the thing on the host and the accelerator is still running, you don't have a race, right? Whether you say you map, then, you know, the typical r rules uh, on the race theory, data, data race theory programs apply, so. But, but, but you, know, you generally can run the code on the host at the time it's shared, so, so you just can't expect there will be no data races. Right, in OpenACC, however, there, in OpenACC, you need to make a choice, an explicit choice, where you run it. And, uh, yes. And even the data we use, like our loss and put up your law in OpenACC, I think it's kind of explicit that you, you can see um, the, the, the data is present in like the pre allocated region. In OpenP, you can just say map, map, but the runtime or compiler have to keep track of all the data allocated in, in before. So there's some subtle difference between those two things. Okay, so we have 10 more minutes until uh, we have just 15 minutes for the break. So I guess we need to go to the back end now, unless somebody wants to add something. now to represent the paradigms that are available or mostly available. Have we agreed on that? Or are we going to use the open um, or, or other or open That's a good question. That's questions I wanted to get out to when we're in the wrap up. <laughs> um, we can discuss it now, assuming that the back end question doesn't affect the middle end question, which I'm not so quite sure about. But probably we have not enough time to discuss the back end in detail anyway. So Okay, so do you want to go to backend first? Okay. I have a suggestion. We have some open slots tomorrow, right? Why don't we have another follow up to this? Yeah. Yeah. What do people think? Should we have a backend slot tomorrow? Yes. That would be awesome. Okay, great. Is there an open slot tomorrow? Um, yes. I think so. I think there's one left. No. Well, there's one that overlaps with GCC re-architecture that would be a bad slot. <laughs> and there's one LTO and IPA, so interprocedural. Oh, that's a dwarf discussion? Yeah. So it is? Yes. That's out of date. That's, that's out of date already. The one Eric on the line is dwarf. So tomorrow, half past two would be the slot then? Yeah. What's there? That, that, that's the one there's the dwarf. Oh, Concurrently. Oh, oh, so, oh, I thought the LTA would make uh, that made a draw. No. Folks get to make choices. Well, I mean, there's the 930 one because, because you know, who cares what the sharing committee says? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we don't really have a, a slot unless we get a breakout room and. Well, or you can have it in a wrap up session. <laughs> 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 
because that goes for a procedural. I can't go for that long. Or maybe uh, stay an extra 15, 20 minutes every morning. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, so what does everyone think? So we have one slot where we have the data race detection and register allocator. The second one is into procedural optimizers and uh, an ARM. The third one would be re-architecture and Deja GNU, which doesn't work because of re-architecture. Then we have LTO and Dwarf, which I guess is probably also, you know, overlap with the people here in the room. And then we have PowerPC and state removal. So state removal, probably also a lot of uh, overlap here. <laughs> and that might be a good idea, actually. So who would be OK with talking about the back end at breakfast? OK, so let's try for the, for the breakfast then. OK, so. Do we have a room for this? We can get one. We, no well, OK. Sure both we will get a room for that. That's not a problem. We'll probably open. We have room. There's always outside. OK, so let's take five minutes and wrap up the, the middle end discussion. Which questions do we really need to discuss right now? And what are our takeaways? Jakob. Well, uh, one is whether to go the LTO way using LTO as the IL, which we save for some time into some sections, then pick up by plug-in and compound for whatever we need. Or the other alternative is probably yeah, achieve multi-target GCC and have the same binary jury multiple. I guess that's going to take Several years. So, I guess we still have too many macros. If we took the gimbal um, generation, like if we took the gimbal, like, uh, and then use the uh, can we feed that into uh, another? Compile uh, another like uh, essentially across the back end of a cross compile. I believe it has target integration in it already. Though. What? But there's but already some target integration. But yeah, there there is a target information we want to keep there. That target, yeah, layout of structures. Some of them more. For for at least OpenMD and OpenACC, we need to use the same. So the sizes of Do the we types again we need to use the same. Even if the hardware does not have those types, we need to so The main advantage you get from a multi-target GCC versus feeding it back in LTOs, but if you have it all together, then you can actually uh, tentatively try to uh, uh, encode something for the other target and see how much could actually gain a little bit to pay for the communication of it. Well, uh, if you save it as LTO code, then you can just compile it and look yeah. at whether it's worth it. And either you uh, compile it into something or nothing. But then uh, you would have to have two LTO plugin compilers communicating with each other to figure out which one is supposed to be responsible to encoding the function. I guess th this is slightly related to the backends then of uh, how we yeah everything is how we represent it in yeah that's fine so. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, so I have a naive question here because I don't know exactly what's already been done or not been done by the time you get to the LTO Gimple sort of level but there are, there are spots where there are certain transformations for example loop unrolling is a good example of this. That's that, that's that after you, you, you want after because you're going to make entirely different choices given you know the architecture of the of the accelerator versus at the least, other. At least so, for open so, the idea is to do this streaming so, so before IPA. 
so that means for interprocedural optimization. Interprocedural in any level of, of yeah. unrolling or any level yeah, of. Yeah, that's, that's no, all those sorts of things are after. Okay, so that's because I think there's this delicate balance of of, of not doing it too late right. because because the targets are different <coughs> enough that well, you're really going to make the, the goal is that my plus team I used the uh, auto uh, factorization as it sort of. Uh, um, entry point to this fantastic so auto vectorizations and um, would figure out on which targets the group should be auto vectorized and uh, then after auto vectorization you normally uh, get the new um, new unloading paths that then works for whatever target it works. Except for there's other optimizations that are done for vectorization change you know, based on the top. Folding is a good example. Okay, so. So I assume this discussion could go on and on and probably will be in the break, but I'd like to at least give people, you know, 15 minutes of break. So what, how do we go from there? You know, what are the next steps? I guess one step is that Thomas keeps us updated about the project. Um, so we communicate about what you do for OpenMP and what you do for it. Right, and, it, and, and, and how do yes. we resolve the, the, the discussion that we just had? So the, do you have suggestions for that, Jakub? What, how to go forward, who should be involved? Well, who we need to drag well, into this? As the, as the internal representation of inside of GCC before the cloning, I guess, yeah, we need just some, some tuple that surrounds the body, uh, body of the target code and has clauses. So, and whether it, we call it OpenMP target or OpenACC target, it really doesn't matter. I guess it's important that yeah, the clauses we add to it some can have open MP semantics, some can have open ACC semantics, and we can do the thing. I think it's a uh, misgiving subsystem as a community about both of these, so that we need uh, to make the automatic transformations for Okay, so I guess that will be the way we go for now, and yeah, we. Uh, we see each other again tomorrow at the breakfast and then we discuss the backend. Thanks. <laughs>